Many Greek Jews were in Auschwitz to Birkenau between 1943 and 1944 and suffered greatly as subjects of medical experiments. The Jews of Greece were known for their assistance to other Jews in distress in Auschwitz, giving out food in easy working conditions. Greek Jews from other communities such as Athens, Yanin, and Prevaza were deported to Birkenau as late as March and early 1944, in April 1944. Most of the Greek Jewish experiment victims died soon after their operations without leaving a trace of their names, their lives, or their horrific stories. Greek doctors arriving in Birkenau were selected for gassing immediately and never had the chance to work and survive. However, several male doctors, mostly from Salonika, but also from Ditomotiko in Athens, assisted fellow prisoners. In Auschwitz III, Monowitz Buna, Dr. Cuenca helped many of his compatriots by admitting them to the Revere Infirmary for 12 to 15 days so they could afford, avoid hard labor and regain their strength. Their position in the camp was strengthened and they were attached to details that emptied incoming railroad cars after their human loads were taken off. In 1944, the Hungarians started coming to Auschwitz. The Greeks already had a number of key positions in the inmate hierarchy. Salonican Jewish champion boxer Jaco Razon assisted hundreds of Jews by providing them with an extra daily soup ration, smuggling 25 liter barrels of soup from the kitchen where he worked. Where he worked. He also referred sick Jews to Dr. Cuenca, Dr. Samuel Levis of Athens, who also assisted Jews in the infirmary in Manowitz Buna. Naon described the sterilization process in Birkenau. In a deathly si silence, the block Altester announced, we want two young fellows of 16 to come forward. After writing down the numbers, he asked for two boys of 17, then two of 18, until he compiled a list of 50 young men. Nobody knows what is happening. These boys form a special commando, the commando of the 50. For a while, they receive relatively light duties. One day, two, to, two weeks or so later, they are taken to a laboratory where an electric current is passed through their genital or, organs. They are sterilized. From that day onward, the commando of the 50 is called the commando of the sterilized. Later, a large number of these men are transferred to Auschwitz where they undergo surgery. During the first operation, one testicle is removed. A month later, the second one also. In this way, German scholars perform their experiments. In a similar fashion, they proceed with sterilization and castration of women. So the head of labor in Auschwitz was a 14-year-old Salonican boy who knew street languages, like Italian and, and uh, German. His name was Jaco Maestro. And he was the work coordinator for Auschwitz. He could ease your workload and change your commando. He did miracles, but he also, for example, prevented uh, a, a, a Greek guy named Shabtai Hanoka from being sterilized, for example. He also helped women. Okay, in terms of women, they were taken to Block 10, and they had sterilization experiments. They had cancer put into their uteri or their wombs. They took pregnant women, they did these experiments. They took women who were, uh, who, who were younger, who'd never given birth, and of course, afterward, those that survived, most of them weren't, weren't able to bear children. But there was one miracle named Eliza Baruch. Eliza Baruch was one of 20 young Judeo-Spanish-speaking Greek Jews selected in a group in April 1943. After having been kept waiting an examination alone in a closed room by doctors Mengele and Schumann, each woman left vomiting. Afterward, Baruch understood that they received stomach x-rays. She also knew that she had cancer implanted into, their, into her uterus. She returned to block 10 for three weeks. Then the operations began. When Baruch resisted, she was dragged on to the operating table. Awaking two days following the operation, she was amazed that she had already undergone surgery. Dr. Samuel, a Jewish-German prisoner, Dr deported from Belgium, had tried to help her, and it later transpired, caused no damage to her reproductive organs when he operated on her. In other words, he thwarted the operation. He didn't really do it. 
He wrapped her incisions with toilet paper and encouraged her by saying that one day she would remember him. When it was time to remove her stitches, it was apparent that the region of the operation was infected. Various primitive methods were used to drain the pus. During the 11 months that she lay in the block after the operation, she was often thirsty, but she noted that those who requested water were given spinal inje injections and withered rapidly. She lived in fear of returning to the evil hands of Dr. Mengele. She eventually went to work and survived. She looked for Dr. Samuel much later, but he was no longer in Block 10. He had been executed for sabotaging operations. Other women, too, noted Dr. Samuel's efforts to spare them from ovary extraction and cancer impl implantation. After the liberation of Lisa Baruch's revenge against the Nazi medical doctors was that she bore children. She is the only known Greek Jewish female medical experiment victim to give birth after the liberation. So uh, I talked about the medical experiments. You had Greek Jews also who are about a fourth of the men's orchestra in uh, Birkenau and also the female orchestra in, in I think it was in Auschwitz. And uh, they all had their stories, um, but they were part of it. They were, they were about a fourth of the workforce in Birkenau, and then so they, they were part of everything. So they were boxers, they were entertainers, they were selected as prostitutes. Uh, they were, later I'll talk about the Zonderkommando. They had to push the bodies uh, <coughs> into the gas chamber, and then they had to take out the dead bodies and uh, burn them in the uh, crematorium. Uh, so the, the Greek Jews uh, did a lot of things. Um, they also revolted. I'll talk about that later. I just want to tell you, there was a violinist. He was actually only a violinist for a month. His name was Jacques Strumza. But uh, I, we, he, he, he liked publicity. So, so in, in his time, he got a lot of uh, publicity and exposure. He was an engineer, so he worked in Buna as an engineer. But before that, he, um, he, uh, he was an, a, a violinist in Auschwitz for, for a uh, month. He writes, I was 30 years old at the time. I didn't know where we were going or we were going to live out a tragedy. My father made me swear not to come back to France after my studies. He was a Salonican who did medical studies in France. Not to marry and certainly not to a non-Jew. I married at the age of 30. It was already under German occupation. He went back to Salonika and married, and I had to ask my father's permission to marry. Auschwitz was full of Jews. I didn't know German. There were 15 SS outside, and I had the strength to say that they were gangsters. The secretary of the Federation of Jews deported from France was an extraordinary man, and when we were in Auschwitz, he asked me once to help him. He, he told me, there's a young woman, not Jewish, in a very tough commando. I asked him to give me her number. I went to the boss and told him the Jew woman wasn't Jewish, evidently false, and she was there as an error. I suggested to put her in the factory. The factory was said to be paradise. It wasn't cold because of the machines, and she stayed in the factory, was saved, and they married. Like that, I saved many people from death, but my sister is the only one who survived from the whole family. So he lost his first wife in a and a baby, and then he remarried afterward. Once I played violin in Auschwitz. Our numbers were called by the SS in Polish, and whoever didn't understand received blows. So we, we, we quickly understood. After getting our numbers, we went to the block. They said, pay attention to your number. If you disappear, they'll batter you to death. We had wooden bunk beds in three tiers. I took my brother, and we took the second tier, but the block com commandant called us. The first question he asked was, are there any pl prisoners who can play violin? Everyone looked at me because I was well known in the community. But I asked them to be quiet. I told them I was an engineer, that's all. The commandant repeated his question. And at that moment, the people pushed me forward. And I said, yes, I play the violin. But because I didn't say anything at the beginning, he thought I was a saboteur. And he gave me five baton blows. I found the courage to tell them that if he beat me, he wouldn't hear my violin. He told me that I was being boastful. He said, you don't know where you are. Here, it's I who give you the orders. You have to obey, and if not, I will kill you. I waited without speaking, and he asked me if I had decided to play violin, yes or no. 
so I played Mozart's concerto in A minor, in A major. After some minutes, he tapped me on the shoulder and told me to stop. He told me that he was a pianist and that I played very well. He hoped that I would join the orchestra and that they had the bass, best players and that he would take me in. He escorted me to the exams to, to join the orchestra. The conductor had a badge saying F, meaning French. He revealed that he'd done the same musical studies as me at, the Bo at Bordeaux with Gaston Poulet. He took me as first violin. The program of the orchestra every day was to play military marches for two hours while people left the work camps and returned. I was in the orchestra for 30 days and then went to a work camp in Auschwitz making grenades.